everyone to welcome to Maypower Hour. I am Tessa Chapel in Indiana, and I'm joined by Megan Jacks, who's in Seattle for one more month. I think you'll be one gone month. by the next one. No, I'll be here for June. No, we, we're doing it early, right? We're yes, doing we're it before doing she leaves, so she'll, she'll have one more. Megan, who is in Seattle currently. So we have two layouts tonight. I'm going first because I know you're excited for her, so I have to go first so that I'm like the opener so you can get the what you all came for at the end as she uh, takes her binder clips to the decorative trimmer. So um, I'll, I'll warm us up with a little punching, and then you can use your brains uh, to do that. So I hopefully, yeah, my... Tabletop is there. There we go. Well, let's straighten it up just a little bit. Let's put the mess out of the way just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I do have my handout. Make sure I gave you the right, correct measurements. Um, I am doing a one pager again tonight. I did one page for this. Of course, if you want two pages, then you would just do it again and do a mirror image. And so like many of you, I was excited to get um, the Stardust white cardstock that was in the most recent buffet. Um, it's fun to have something a little bit bright, like we don't have to use the back of all of our paper sheets forever now again. Maybe we'll get a real white soon enough. Um, and I wanted to do something a little bit summery. So I didn't, I ran out of summer break. I've been waiting on that. So I chose Feeling Bright for this layout. And I use um, the double Rick Rack here. If you have the double Rick Rack, I do suggest using it. It's really fun to play with and get the multi layers. Um, if you don't, I would suggest a chain style. Um, one of the thinner ones, if you do, if you wanna to try to fit two, um, a couple that came to mind are uh, Ruffle Trim, Infinity Chain. And if you can think of other ones, you can put them in the chat to kind of help people jog their memory. If you have a larger one, you just might only be able to get one punch down there, which is fine too. If you have the old zigzag, that one, you could get a couple of them in. Um, it does leave a little bit of white space down the middle. Um, we'll be able to choose. You can choose if you want to leave it as white space. I did leave an intentional, it's, it's a little bit bigger gap. So if you have many ABCs, you can um, do a title or some journaling down there, or you could cover it up with a um uh, like kind of a statement border maybe a laser cut or a border sticker or something if you want to put through there on the example in the handout i had um a phrase that i put there on there for one picture and then i showed this one as a border from sunrays for days i think it was and then over here on the side we're going to kind of make a sidebar border and you'll want a shape icon punch to put there. If you this is the sun punch, which is still circulate. Some of us still have it. Um, the umbrella, the butterfly, so many shapes. We all have shapes that we don't use well enough. So choose a shape for that. And then you need two sheets of cardstock. Um, one that's going to be pretty dominant. It's the pop. I have the white here popping out, and then my back is a, a dark sea green. So you want something with a high contrast. And then when you, we do choose our papers, you want something that's gonna contrast um, the color that you chose. I don't recommend choosing papers or prints that kind of have the same color bleed as your background cardstock. The easiest example is white. A lot of prints that Creative Memories makes has a white background to it, and they will get lost if you put that on white cardstock. So you want something that kind of gives you an edge to it. I did use this rainbow stripe. So I am doing that white against white and you can see how it kind of fades in. But I like the effect that it gave me um, kind of in, on that inner layer in there. So that was an intentional choice in that. And then up in the upper right corner, we'll be able to use a piece um, of the cardstock that you cut or um, some of the collections have um, journal boxes or it could be an embellishment or cluster or something in there. So the cut's pretty easy, um, but choosing your selection, of course, is always the harder part for us. I am going to use um, the Stardust White again. And then I pulled out Positive Vibes. And this is where I am not unprepared. So you guys all get to see me choose my paper because I chose to talk to Megan instead. So in this collection, I had I knew I had some solid tonals that would work really well. And it has this print, which I wanted to use. It's going to kind of pull all of the colors together. And it's a very dense print and it's not on white. It's It has a lot of color in it. 
um, so that it will pop out against the white. So I know I'm going to do this. Um, when you punch, if you are using the double rick rack, you might have the option of the paper choice on the back side to flip if you want to punch something twice. And this one would work. The back side of this would work well. So I could get two options out of there if I have enough paper um, to get punched both of those. These are scraps that aren't going to work. Um, I'm going to use this lighter, kind of the aquamarine color. The back side is I'm not going to use. I don't want this print mixed in. Um, and I am doing, since I am doing double rick rack, I'm going to, well, you get two out of one punch. And that's why on the handout, I said, you know, you're going to punch it two to four times. It depends kind of what the size is. And so I punched one, two, three, four colors um, for this one. So I'm going to punch one. Oh, see, I have a whole sheet of that. So this is going to be two. I'm going to punch this one twice so I get that print in there. I don't need those scraps. And I need one more color. And I think for my um, background, you're going to see a little bit of shine because the cardstock is still in my paper sleeves. I can either choose this grape, which is going to kind of pull out these. I feel like it's a little light, though. It's not going to be ground the papers as much as I want. So I also have dark purple that I was going to use as my base with the white. That would really pop. Um, one option, if you are short on papers, you could also throw in another cardstock. You know, I could punch a grape and have that as one of my color mixes. It's going to pull out some of that lighter color. So that would be one option if I wanted to. Or the rest of the papers in here, I could go with this blue. I do not want to use this. Like if I punch that, I'm going to lose a lot of the design and it's that, going to be that white on white. So that would not be a good choice. We already took this one out. Um, I do like this more medium tone blue. The back side of it is are these words that would com get completely lost in the chain punch. I wouldn't know it was words and it's going to get lost on the white. If I'd rule that one out. So, and this one is a blue. So I just need one more. Um, this one is, is pretty similar dark to here. So if I chose these, I would probably do my punch order kind of hard to show you because this one is the print also be there I could do like a monochromatic blues down there if I wanted to pull this one in I probably could take out one of these blues they're pretty similar I don't get a lot of contrast if I choose these these are kind of different tones or I could leave this one that this blue probably works a little bit better with the aquamarine and if I go down this trail, I probably would skip the grape. And so these are probably the four that I'll choose. So I have the dark purple, this, 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 and this. So those are going to be my paper choices. So once you have your punch, you know what you're going to punch, border maker. If you do have, use a chain style with a border punch, they are larger. And you're probably just going to get two, one on top, one on bottom. And grab my base paper. And I have my double rick rack. So one nice thing about double rick rack is the extra pieces that come out when I punch it is what I use to create the side border. I just used all of the scraps, which was fun. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to follow the cut guide. So never mind, I'm not going to punch. I'm going to follow my directions and make sure they're appropriate. So I need my trimmer because we're going to punch or cut the cardstock first. And I'm cutting the white because the purple is my background. So our first cut is going to be three and a quarter. And then one and three fourths. I always like to cut anything one and three fourths or less on the right side of the trimmer. And then this one and three fourths, I'm going to cut it in half. So I need an eight and a half inch piece, which is kind of like cutting off three and a half. Not kind of, it is. 
So I'll have three and a half and eight and a half. And then I have this large piece left. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm going to cut at five and a half and four, which is going to leave me uh, two and a half inches. So five and a half, four. And that should leave me, that's more than two. Um, yes, two and a half. So we're good with that one. So on this piece, the largest piece, the first one that you cut, that's five and a half. We're going to flip that. And this is going to be the two mats that I showed. So we're going to cut this in half. And it's going to be two three and a half inch mats. And then I have this piece that's four inches wide. And I'm going to cut six inches off of this. It should be seven. So it's going to give me one inch off. So let's review that cut. How did I get through that cutting? The first cut was three and a quarter. And then I had one and three fourths. And I cut that at eight and a half and three and a half. And then I turned it 90 degrees. And I cut at five and a half. And then I flipped that and cut it in half. And then I cut it at four and I cut down to four by six and the one by four. And then I have this extra piece down here at the bottom. So yeah, the photo, let's see, it's, it's one, three and a quarter, it's three and a quarter. I think they're both three and a quarter. Okay, so that is the cutting piece. Now we can move on to our punches. So let me know who's, if you're following along, I guess if you, you tell me what you are punching. Are you using double rick rack or are you going to use something else? We had some different people. Some people were trying diamonds, um, sunshine and camera, gen stones, bamboo border punch. Um, oh yeah, gem those stone's are, pretty thin. That's a good one, yeah. Someone's going to be using leaf punch. Dawn saying she's going to use double rec rack because she doesn't give it enough love. So this is a good infinity punch, rope chain. So definitely some great varieties. Um, Judy's going to use uh, maple leaf on the top part. So that'll be really pretty. And for those larger punch area, leaf yeah. chain. Um, double, Jenny's going to use double rec rack because it looks like the ties of a football and it's for her layouts for football season. Karen's going to be using fireworks. So I'm punching this one twice because I'm using it front and back. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of good choices showing up. Hmm. And don't throw away these pieces if you're using double rick rack because we're going to use quite a bit of those. So I'm punching four, but again, choose your punch. Depend on the sizing. Do you use double rec rack very much? Use it probably as much as I should. It's another one. It has a very specific um, look to it, I guess. You know, sometimes usually I want a little bit more um, presence. And so I find myself using it um, kind of like Dawn, not as much as I should. It's a little feminine also. And that is true. Sometimes I do prefer if I want that look, I... I sometimes wish we had the uh, a narrow zigzag. Yeah, you know, a, a double bit. zigzag. Yeah, a double zigzag. I should send that into product suggestion because I think that that would be a nice um, option as well. Yeah, Jenny, it would be a good one from with pictures from the sixties. It's a very groovy um, shape. Okay, I need two pieces to build my borders. I need the three and a quarter one, and then the 
one and three fourths by eight and a half. So these are the two I'm going to build my border on. You definitely want your repositional tape if you're working with thin borders. And I'm looking for my, I brought it in here. Okay, I have some in here. And a silicone mat. We're going to set a good example. I have some silicone so I don't get adhesive everywhere. You're going to want to space out how your borders will sit near. The reason why this is skinny as it is is so that I could fit all of these cuts onto one paper. So if you need a larger one, you could cut this bigger. It's just going to squeeze this piece down a little bit. It would be end up being shorter, as you could see on the handout. And before you adhere, you can dry fit, kind of lay out your border pieces and know what pattern you want. Those blues are even some more similar punched. I'm gonna have to keep those separate. Also with the double rig rack, you have to make sure they're all facing the same direction so that they will nestle into each other. Decide which Color. I think I might do the light on the inside. Do the darker. I'll do that print between the two dark ones, which kind of pops it out. And the light blue is a little bit more subtle. I'm also flipping the orientation of my brick rack. I'm looking at the end here where it starts the little hump. And that's how I kind of compare to make sure they're all facing the right direction. And then it's just adhering them down. You guys hear Gray Kitty? They think it's time to eat and it's not time to eat. I'm not gonna be shocked if one of them jumps up here. The cloudy days mess with the cats. You are going to cut the very ends of this border off. We're going to trim it down a quarter inch on each end. So uh, if you're using double rick rack or nestling in any other style, it's okay if the ends are not completely lined up. We're going to trim those off. Once you get started on your pattern, it's a little easier to line them up. I'm just eyeballing the depth as I go down. A little easier to hear that way. And I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to start on the outside and then adhere my way up. On my demo layout, I adhere them so they were always going kind of the same direction. I'm, I'm flipping that on this layout just to have a little bit different look. Did you guys all have a good Mother's Day? We had great weather this weekend. That's why Power Hour came out kind of late yesterday because Megan and I both, I think, spent time outside instead of inside this weekend. 
I got about half the day by myself, which was lovely. I went to Campbell's game at 8 a.m. And then I went to the car wash. I had a, there's a new one open by me, so the wash was free. And then I spent like half hour vacuuming it out. It was so satisfying to get that done. And then I came home. And Saturday, I'd gone with my neighbor to buy all my plants for my pots. So I spent quite a bit of time deciding what to put in what pot. I have a lot of pots. I, I didn't count it counted yet. Last year, between inside and outside, I have like over 30. It gets a little bit excessive, but I love them. How many other plants? I know some of you love plants. Okay, so this is the bottom one. All right, you have the middle open. So you could, if you already know something you want, you could adhere it down the middle. You could leave it open for uh, sticker letters, ABC letters. Um, I think our mini ones would work. I don't know about the older big ones if they would work. Uh, but then I'm going to work my way down my skinny border. So on this one, I'm going to use these on the rickrack remnants. I'm choosing the ones that don't have the straight edge. So I'm getting rid of the straight edges. If you used a different punch, you're just gonna need to punch a couple of more to fit. Mm -hmm. A couple of that you can trim down. I like being able to use up these pieces. They're kind of hard to throw away. This is kind of how this layout happened because I was like, I don't wanna throw these away. Let's build another border. And then I'm going to use the same pattern that I used at the bottom, and I'm going to do it at the top and the bottom, and then I'm going to work my way in with the shapes in the middle. So I'm just following the guide I've already set. These are going to be longer than the border, so they can hang off each side, and we will clean that up when we punch find the pattern the layout isn't that hard except for all of this taping i am going to suck up my time yep see it's already 8 30. I'm, I'm not going to hear the end of this now i didn't have my handout printed and i'm going to go over time yes i'll be reminding you about it for the <laughs> next six months or so if we must have both had the same idea because yesterday I washed my car, but I washed mine by hand. I didn't go to the um the Did you do it by hand on the outside. Yeah, I just I don't know. It was it was fine. And then I vacuumed out the inside. It was pretty it well, as you know, my car needed to be cleaned out on the inside I am for sure. Impressed. Yeah. I didn't know you cleaned your car. I every once in a while. We have the lovely thing where it just gets the um, the pollen and the, the stuff all gets into the grooves of the car. And I had to get like the toothbrush out. And that's probably why I don't go to the 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 place because I just had, it needed a little more attention than just going through the car wash. Now you have those, all the mats inside that I would like to have. So do you pull those out to wash them? I not this time I did not. So it was more of a vacuum only job. Those the mats definitely need to be pulled out. They're dusty and so forth. But that level of detail, it was not happening. Okay, I am thinking that I think later after we get down to Arizona, maybe this fall, I will get maybe for my birthday, I will have uh, do a, a, a full on detailing. I didn't make that one. I'm just punching three icons to go down the middle with this border. So you get the gist of it. We're almost done. Yeah, I'm sure people would say, you know, your kids or somebody else should have cleaned out your car. I don't know. It was just, it was a good moment for me to just get it done. And I knew that it was done the way I wanted it, which was very thoroughly. It wasn't really that dirty. It's just all the stuff that comes off people's shoes you ordered your mats already though right they just haven't arrived no i didn't order them oh well that's how they show up is usually you have to order them first no i know i really do want them but other things became the priority financially because it's several hundred dollars to do the whole car yeah they are pricey but i should because um I definitely will before next soccer season. 
because the girl's dirty sometimes and the turf i get turf bits everywhere okay i'm missing one i'll have to look through and find or i'll have to change color but you kind of get the gist of building my border down the middle so i'm going to play with that a little bit um if you don't love what you choose like you know if that's too much white i could go back and punch the circle punch would fit there this is one and three fourths which is the width of most of our punches so the circle would go out to the edge but other than that everything else should fit inside of this border i'll just use this color and then i'll show you how i give it the clean cut and then i'll show you how to lay this all out I could probably even fit two in there. I might go back and do two. But when you're ready for it, if you have a long pair of scissors, I think it's easier than trimmer. You can put this in your trimmer and put it down and, you know, cut these. I think it's honestly easier to just have a nice longer pair of scissors. Even the blue ones would work. And just cut down the edge to clean those up. Jenny's saying they're playing. Angie, my assistant, she was asking me about her plants today, too. Some of hers not looking very good. And it probably is a water to sun ratio. I do pretty well with my outdoor plants. The succulents, trying to overwinter my succulents are what my challenge usually is. I only lost three this year, which considering how many plants I brought inside was pretty good. Okay, the other thing we have to do is trim this down. So once you have this one, you want to trim off a quarter inch off each end. And again, that's just giving us that, just that clean edge, and it allows us to frame inside our base paper. This firm little cut to get all of those borders trimmed. You know what my next project is, though? I don't think it'll be expensive, and I YouTubed it. I think I can do it. The actual handle on my outdoor spigot, that plastic thing cracked, and so I had to be very careful trying to get it the water on and off. It looks like you can just replace the handle part, so that is on my list of things to do once it stops raining. Okay, so if we cut this down, you can cut it down more if you want, but it should frame just inside your base. Then you have this border will fit just inside there. I really like that contrast. That's pretty. And then you have the mat. So you can actually put photos on these or you can just layer in your photos. You don't have to follow the mat sizes exactly. With this four by six one here, you could go up or you could go down, but you have this piece, the one inch piece that would fill in your gap if you wanted to, or you could push it up and fill it in down here, depending on if you want it as an embellishment or title cluster, I'd recommend the top. You also have room up here if you have any other border or a title, it, maybe you don't choose to do a title down here, you could do it up here. Could fit those in there. This is positive vibes paper, so it did not come with an abundance of things to play with. So I'm going to be at the mercy of my punches. And I also had so these are pretty old. They're natural laser cut ones, and I've kept these with this stack. So I'll probably go through here and find something to layer in and then do some more fresh flower punches and tuck in around up here and leave this and if you have a collection that comes with mats or anything in the embellishments this is a fun area to decorate because it's going to kind of make a triad with your border at the top and the bottom or you can fill in you know something down below down there so I like this. I, I like this quite cardstock. It's fun to have the flex in it. Um, hopefully, I can't wait to see which you guys choose. So I'll I'll mess with this while you guys are all engrossed in Megan's layout, and I'll post a final version, of course, by tomorrow. So that says it. You guys can see all my mess too. I didn't get my camera zoomed in very well. You should see the big view. It's even worse, but this. <laughs> Megan's face always looks so neat and tidy. 
because she hides it well. I do hide it well. It's hidden well. There is, there's, I, I just shove everything out to the outside. Okay. All right. Well, so it's let me, it's my turn. Okay. Just a second here. All right. So as Tessa mentioned, I am Megan Jacks. I am out just north of Seattle for the next few weeks. And then I will be in Phoenix. Uh, we are relocating. So we're going to be in North Central Phoenix. For any of you that are familiar with the Phoenix area, we'll be about 10 to 12 miles north of downtown. So um, tonight's layout, we're going to be using the decorative trimmer, plus we are going to be using some uh, binder clips. If you are, you can alternate in some other tools. Uh, I will be using the decorative trimmer with the binder clips, but you can use a straight trimmer if you don't want to have a wavy frame. You can also, um, uh, there's lots of ways you could do things with this. You just kind of have to play around. So if you're using different tools, or even if you're not, if you're just doing this for the first time, I would maybe consider using some scrap paper, maybe some um, a card stock. Not, don't use your pretty paper. They only have a couple sheets of. Uh, use Get something out that you can practice with there. Then if you make a mistake, you're not quite as upset. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to my overhead camera and we will get started. So let me quickly show you the layouts. So this is the single page version. Um, what you will actually be able to do, we are going to cut two sheets of designer paper in the same way. That actually gives us enough pieces to be able to make both the single page and the two page layout if you are so desire to do so. If you do not want to cut two designer papers, you could just cut one designer paper and then maybe some cardstock instead. You can just see here that I ended up needing to use two different sheets of cardstock so that I could have the three patterns that work together. So uh, this is the welcoming wood block. It's an advisor exclusive paper pack. And the, you can see here, I used one sheet to cut out a piece. Um, from this multicolored piece of paper, you can see the inset piece is on the single page layout. And then I went ahead and cut the blue and mustard color paper so that I'd have the blue centerpiece to use with the uh, multicolored frame. And then I would have the blue and the mustard uh, frame here to work with the multicolored uh, big um, centerpiece mat. So that is, um, you know, kind of how it works. I did use, um, I went ahead and also used the Stardust white paper here. I thought it was really pretty. It's got some very neutral flex in it. That, so it works for a wide range of paper uh, colors and patterns. So for, but for tonight, the uh, layout I'm going to be doing is I have some pictures of my hat, Miss Kitty. Now oh, there she is. I would call her, I mean, we call her pretty girl. She's sweet, but she's also, you know, maybe not so sweet at 5 a.m. in the morning. But at three o'clock in the afternoon, or actually this was right around lunchtime, I did take her outside. I We're letting her grow up heavily supervised. We are going to try to get her a harness um, or that we can then um, basically put her on a, a leash of sorts in the backyard so she can have a little bit more outside the home, but she needs massive supervision supervision, so she doesn't run away. But I have some photos to play with. So I thought I would use the new summer break collection because part of it was I'm going to do that because I know I could end up using two different, um, I could make the two layouts out of this. I really only need a single page layout for the pictures of Kitty, but I will use uh, the materials to create that second page or the two page layout that I can save later. So I am going to be using the line paper that has the blues and greens on the back side, And I'm using the sunshine paper that has the tonal kind of a paler yellow on the back. And I have some blue uh, cardstock as well. So to get started, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the decorative trimmer. I've got some binder clips here. I'm going to take them off for just a second because I want to kind of walk you through a little bit of the decorative trimmer. Um, if this is your first time using it or you haven't used it in a while, or if it's your first time, you know, having me demonstrate it for you, I'm going to just talk quickly about the marking that I do on my trimmer. 
If you have the white trimmer, it is the same as the old blue trimmer. So if you have the old darker blue trimmer with the yellow blades, it's the same exact thing as this current one that is the white with the uh, blue blades. If you have the yellow trimmer and you're thinking, oh, you need some new blades on it because maybe your cuts are starting to get a little bit rough, the blue blades that are on the Creative Memories website do work with the older blue trimmer. Likewise, if you had the older blue one, maybe it's broken, lost, but you had a ton of yellow trimmer blades, the yellow ones will work on the white trimmer as well. So the one thing to note with the white trimmer, even so much on the blue trimmer, is that the markings were very hard to see. I mean, you can kind of see them up close here. Uh, just the white the manufacturing, they're just in there is, you know, in, uh, debossed, I guess you would say, for the measurements. So what I did, I took a thin Sharpie. I think I used blue. And I went ahead and I marked all of those numbers and everything at the top. I didn't necessarily mark the bottom, but I did mark the top. If I open it up, you can see marked them all in there. I also then ended up drawing lines down where the whole numbers are to help me see those lines coming down, which I think is really important when you're working around the waves because it, it just helps you see where does that line come down. Zero is actually right here on the swell edge. This is the swell edge. This is the wavy edge. And the other thing to note is this entire trimmer bed is actually 12 and a half inches long. And the center is in the center of the bed, which means we need to come down a quarter inch from the top and up a quarter inch from the bottom. And that will put everything nice and centered. So you can have the uh, center of your design is on the center of your paper. So when I talk about centering on your decorative trimmer, that's what I'm talking about. And that's why I did use a thin tip Sharpie at the top and the bottom to mark where that is coming up one set of squares. That's a quarter inch. All of these squares represent a quarter inch. All right. So this particular uh, technique that we're going to use, we are going to use some binder clips. I have some small binder clips. These are the smaller ones. And when you're putting them on here, you can see here's my, a, my quarter inch line right there. I'm actually gonna take my binder clip, I'm gonna put it on the outside ledge of the track that your the blade goes down. And I wanna have it so that the right edge of this particular binder clip is gonna slightly overlap. It's gonna overlap by about maybe an eighth of an inch, that, that line. Maybe like somewhere like a little between a 16th to an eighth of an inch. Do you see there how it just kind of overlaps? It's hard to see, but it's not lined up. That left edge is not lined up with the line. It overlaps ever so slightly. And I'm gonna do the same thing down at this end where I'm gonna have that, the, uh, the excuse me, that's the right edge of the binder clip. The left edge of the binder clip is gonna stick out over that line by about, a 16th to an eighth of an inch, somewhere in there. And it's really hard to see, but I promise you it is overlapping. Next, we are going to work with either a piece of cardstock. If you want to practice, you can scrap paper. It just needs to be scrap paper. It can be cardstock and be the ugly paper that you aren't sure you necessarily want to use, but you can certainly um, you know, use ugly paper. I'm just gonna go ahead and start off um, with my sunshine paper. And we're gonna be trimming all four sides. So it does not, um, does not matter whether or not uh, which direction we do. So um, uh, Linda's comment is she has the older, the antique uh, trimmer that was the actual, I think she's talking about, it was, it actually goes with the custom cutting system and it uses the blades. I would stick with using a red blade on that one, it's gonna give you the closest cut. And you're just gonna to have to play around a little bit. You wanna make sure that you are starting and stopping a uniform distance. You can try playing with your the, the binder clips on that, that, the blue custom cutting old school uh, uh, pattern and see if that works. But you just have to play around with it a little bit. This piece here, we're gonna take the left side of the paper and I'm going to feed it in from the right to the left and I'm going to come over here 
to the one and a quarter inch. So we're going past the one inch here, over here to the one and a quarter inch. And I'm gonna line it up all the way down. My binder clips, I see somebody asking, they're the small, they're the smallest ones I have. So they look to be, oh, let me see here. They look to be the three quarter inch ones. So either the half inch or the three quarter inch should work fine. Um, any longer, and you have a tendency that they won't fit within the curvature. So I would stick with the three quarters inch or smaller, but my paper, I'm gonna line up at that one and a quarter inch. Hmm. And one and a quarter inch should be about where the back edge of the swell paper or the swell guide is. But one and a quarter inch, I am making sure that I am centered top to bottom. And then what I'm gonna do here is I am just gonna go ahead and cut from clip to clip following my swell edge. And then I rotate and repeat that lining up again at that one and the one and a quarter. I should find that I'm very close down here at the end to having a corner that is released. If you're finding that it's pretty far away, you're going to have to, you, you could just use your scissors to finish the cut. But what you can do is you ultimately would want to move your binder clips, adjust that a little bit towards the outside. Maybe you needed to be closer to that eighth of an inch. That's where um, you find that the little adjustments on the binder clips matters. But making sure you are lined up at one and a quarter inch, that's also really important. And just keep rotating. You're going to do all four sides. And we are actually, after we cut this one, we're going to cut our second piece because we're doing the exact same technique on that second piece. Mine did not fully release. So I'm just going to grab my scissors, grab my micro tip scissors, and I will go ahead and just give everything a little bit of a cut to release those corners. I think I needed to have my binder clips just a little bit further out on that line. It's all good. And also, I am addicted to your DVD. So there are my two pieces. I have my center piece and my wavy cut frame or my swell cut frame. I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm going to repeat the process with my, the lime, the citrus or the lime slice paper. And just keep working all the way around. And this is where, and I could have made that adjustment if I needed to before I started cutting here, is if you found that your first set was a little bit, you were having to cut more than you would have liked, you could just do that little adjustment of your binder clips. Like I could just ever so slightly pull them just ever so slightly out. And that should give me those corners should completely cut fray then. You can try something similar with the wavy edge. I don't know the exact measurement to make sure, like, can you just do the inch and a quarter? Uh, but that's where you can kind of play around, maybe with some, um, you know, just scrap paper, see what you think. Always take your time to make sure you're lined up at that inch and a quarter. If that's usually where, if I make a mistake, that's usually where it is. I get going too fast. So I light up at like an inch or an inch and a half, and I want to be at an inch and a quarter. So after I made those adjustments, I still have a little bit 
cut those corners a little bit. There we go. So now I'm done with my decorative trimmer. And you can see what I've got is I've got two frames with my center cut pieces. So now what I want to do is I am going to go ahead, I'm going to pull my the center pieces and just to the side, set those aside for the moment. We're going to be working with the frames. So now we're ready to move on. We've done steps one through three. We're going to go ahead now with step four, we need to go back to our 12 inch trimmer and we're gonna be using the scoring blade. And what I wanna do is I'm going to bring my frame in, I'm gonna pull a corner in from the right side to the left. I have my 45 degree line right here. I'm gonna line up that corner or that with the, with the frame and bring it down to two and a half inches. So the corner here comes out to two and a half inches. And then what I'll do is just make sure it's lined up, kind of hold it in place. And then I will go ahead and do use my scoring blade along here. The one thing I do wanna point out, check before you start scoring, check your cut line here. If you've got a well-worn mat, you will want to make sure you have a fresh or relatively fresh track or uh, line on your gray cutting mat of the, of the trimmer. That way, if you have a well-worn line and you use a scoring blade on it, you might have it, you could actually cut your paper. So if you, uh, it may be helpful just to switch over to a fresh one. I just recently uh, switched over to a new cutting line. So I am confident cutting this or when I score with it, it's gonna be fine. And then you're gonna work around and do all four corners this way. Take the time to make sure you line it up at that 45 degrees. You're gonna do all four corners of both frames this way. There's one. I've done all four corners of this piece. I'm gonna grab the other frame and we'll get all four corners of this one as well. more corners and I'll have all four of them done. Okay. Now this next piece, what I want you to think, you can go ahead and you can fold all of your corners. You can go ahead and fold those along the score line. You have some flexibility with this. You know, if you score, fold it one way, but you decide you want to use the other side, you can go ahead and, um, you know, swap it around. You can just fold it back the other direction. I am pretty certain I'm going to be using for the single page of the photos with Kitty. I'm going to be using the the sunshine as my frame, and I'm going to be using the green as the inset. So I'm pretty certain that's going to be my pairing. The other one would be used with, um, I think I'm going to use, save it for some pool photos. I will actually probably cut this other one in half. I do, if you have a pencil, I would note on here, if when it comes to making your second, the two page layout, if you're going to separate the pieces and do, where is my, oh, here it is. 
If you're going to make this one where you separate the pieces, oh, that's not it. Grab the right pieces. It actually worked best to go ahead and cut your frame in half and cut this big um, center piece mat in half and assemble them separate from each other. The reason was is after I had my hand out all done, I kind of messing around with everything, I realized that I you have to work really hard to get everything lined up exact. If I wanted to cut this, take all my mats off and just cut this in half, my points aren't perfect. They don't line up exactly. It's actually easier for you just to go ahead and cut your pieces, your frame and your center mat in half first before you start doing the two page layout. But I'm just gonna go ahead you can still fold your frame, your pieces. You would just go ahead when you're cutting this, you could just bring it back out and just slice it at, um, let's see here, nope. You slice it from uh, the, the corners, like right along this edge and right along that piece right there. If you were cutting this, I would cut here and I would cut up here. And then this will be the piece that goes with this one. And what I would do to find my center of this piece is I would just fold it in half, give a quick pinch up here at the top and a quick pinch at the bottom. And that's gonna tell me where my middle is. And then I can go ahead and cut here. So cut, cut the pieces in two before you put them on your divided six by 12 inch piece of paper, all right? But I'm gonna come back over here working with this piece. And I think, real quick, because we have a lot of pieces that are just folding and they're not really behaving themselves, and I do want to do a little bit of a dry fit, I am going to use my scrap easel where I can use the magnets to hold things in place. Things are going to line up. You want to line up your, your point here is going to be at six inches. I want to say overall it's three and a half. Uh, you should be three and a half inches from this outside edge. And all that I'm doing is I am just, like I said, I'm wanting to do a dry fit, an overall dry fit of this and make sure that I like the colors. The, because I might switch this around and have the sunshine be my folded pieces, but I don't know. I am going to put this in here. Yeah, I think I will because I just don't feel like I can see a lot of the sunshine pattern. I do want to see that pattern because it was such a pretty day today. These are pictures that I took a kitty when she was outside. We went outside today. And we're going to do just a very basic pinwheel here. I do think I am going to go ahead and plan to mat these photos. I seem to have misplaced one of them. Nope, here it is. And I think I need to have uh, the yellow. I wanna have the sunshine out here. So one of the things I could do if I wanted to mat using the blue here, I could actually come in and cut a frame out of my blue paper. Now the downside to cutting my frame out of this blue paper, this blue cardstock, I could cut, I think I can come in an inch and a half. The biggest thing then is you're gonna have a harder time getting this frame put onto a frame that's made from your blue cardstock. So would not necessarily be something I would recommend. I, if you're going to, if you wanna pull some of this cardstock out, I would probably, um, I would, give yourself a generous amount on that outside edge if you wanted to come here and pull any of the cardstock out. I happen to know with my pictures the size that they are, I need a fairly big size to get and maps that are usable with my photo. So I'm probably gonna leave it as is. And I also think what I might do, just for a little more added details, I might come in with the, uh, the lunar blue that was from the most recent cardstock buffet. 
I think that would look really pretty as just a little bit of a pop of color behind those photos. But first of all, I am gonna flip this over. Get those little more of that sunshine showing on the paper. I will do just, again, I'm gonna do a dry fit. I just wanna make sure that I like it. I'm not too worried about having everything placed exactly because when it's time to start adhering, I will grab my 13 by 13 cutting mat. I definitely, I, since I have so much green in the grass, I definitely think I need to map them unless I were to come in. Let's see what the other side looks like. That might work too. It's a little bit busier of a background. So I'm not sure how it's going to look. I still think I'm going to have to have my photos matted. Oh, I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Which side should I use? And then if I come in, I don't know if I were to come in. What do you guys think of that? This side, Mary's, you guys are suggesting maybe this side. Yeah, I think so too. I think it just has a little bit darker. It just lets that green of the grass pop out a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll leave the sunshines on the folded side. So we're seeing those suns pop through and we'll, um, I call this the pool tile side because it makes me think of pool tile that you'd have around the perimeter of your pool. So this is how I'm gonna put it together. All right. So now what I'll do, grab my 13 by 13 mat and it's time to transfer it over to here. So pull all my magnets off. I know from putting this other one together, I am gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back side of my cutting or my paper and get this stuck down to my cutting mat just so that it is um, behaves itself. And is it moving around as I'm trying to line everything up? Because this frame can get a little bit unwieldy. Now, as I mentioned before, I can see up here, when I put this out, I can come in at three and a half. Here's three and a half over here coming in from the other side is uh, two is three and a half inches in. That's going to be where things are going to line up. Now, I have a feeling that my blue paper might be a smidge bigger than uh, 12 inches. Some of our card stock has been that way. Navy blue is a little larger than three or than 12 inches. But in general, it should be about, yeah, coming in at three and a half, I'm gonna be a little bit off on one side because I think this blue is a little bit wider than 12. I'm using repo adhesive. That's the only way to go. I'm not putting any adhesive on my folded flap. Yeah, I can see that I'm coming. I've got a little bit more space on this side. I'm pretty lined up over here, but yeah, I'm definitely, this is definitely wider than 12 inches. So I'll have a little bit of cleanup to do once I get everything put together and that's okay. It's been fun to watch everyone's face, watch you try to put that together. Everyone's just looking waiting to see if you're going to be able to figure it out. I am. Repo adhesive makes everything better. Because no one can work along with this. They have to like stop, watch, process, try it, add it later. I'm going to be impressed. The first person that posts this, if, like some people get, well, I guess they could have worked on it during the day. Yeah, they could have had a little bit of a head, head, start. Bit, head start, but there are some decorative trimmer pros out there, people who are very adept with their binder clips. 
Now this piece here, what you can do is if you, um, have the, you want to have this lined up in the center as best you can. You can grab your 18 inch ruler and come across corner to corner if you want to be able to see it. But I'm just kind of going to eyeball it, fold my flaps close and just kind of looking for uniformness of the blue sections that are holding for coming through. Um, I do want, well, it ultimately won't matter. I'm going to rotate this once I put this on. I want the, uh, the, the tiles per se to be going this direction. Don't ask me why. It's just in my mind. In my mind, they're pool tiles and that's the direction they should be going. So now I have got some, my photos are three and a half by fives, which works fine to do the pinwheel orientation. I've got to swap some things around a little bit. I didn't quite get Kitty looking the proper direction. She's kind of looking off. When you're, ever you're working with a pinwheel or any kind of a grid thing like that, think of the Brady Bunch when you do your photo placement, you want them, remember in the Brady Bunch, the opening segment, when they're in that nine by uh, the three by three square, they're all looking at each other, right? They never look off screen. They're looking at each other. And you really want that same thing when you're working with multiple photos on the same page. You want everything to be looking in towards the middle, if at all possible. You don't want them necessarily looking off. I don't necessarily like that she's looking off to the, to the side. But that's all I've got. I didn't have any other photos of her looking the other direction. If you have a two page layout, it doesn't matter so much if she would be looking across to a second page over here. So maybe when I'm putting this in my album, I might think, oh, I'll put this on my left page so that when we open the album, she's just glancing over to more pictures of herself. So here I'm going to grab a piece of lunar blue. My photos are three and a half and three and a half by five. I am going to, I have room to trim them down a little bit more. So I'm going to cut my mats to three and a half by five. So I'm going to cut this to five inches wide. Oops, I've got the scoring blade in there. I'm going to cut over and I'll do, I can get three of them on here at the three and a half by five. And then I will trim down those photos a little bit more. This next one, I'll just cut this piece to three and a half wide. So I'll put these pieces on and then after I'll go ahead and get them. Let's see, how did I have this? And I give the measurements of you can use the four by four squares. I, I chose four by four squares because that's a efficient use of mats. If you were to use, um, if you were to go with four and a half or four and a quarter inch squares, it makes it nice because you don't have to cut your photos, but you end up using more paper to make those mats because four by four squares, we can get three uh, per four inch strip of a 12 piece, 12 inch piece of paper. But if we want like four and a quarter or four and a half inch, then we can't quite get that as much. So that's why usually when I'm doing my mats, I will sometimes just stick with like a four by four or four by six because it's just more efficient use of the paper. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and tack these down. You guys are seeing the gist of how this is going to look. But I'm I like the I one of Kitty. I like, cause I think her body's facing the layout and it looks like she's like doing this model pose looking yeah, off she, in the distance. She is, she really does like to go outside today. She was a little, she's feeling a little more confident and a little more darty. Like, you know, she was ready to run under the deck, which is not going to work. So we definitely need to get her a harness and get her trained onto that. Well, that could be interesting. She is still fairly young. I saw somebody comment about getting them trained while they're young. We probably should have started this a lot earlier, but, you know, she's still young and dumb and she should be able to figure it out. 
So here we go. You can kind of see how these are coming together. And then of course I have all sorts of embellishments out of the, and stickers. It's not quite summertime here, so I can't use those, but I certainly could come in with a bright, big sunshine. It's a beautiful day today and get these pictures and look at, I mean, just look at that tail. I mean, that tail, she's a dirty mess sometimes when she comes back in the house after being outside, but she enjoyed herself out there. So I will play around with getting all of these pieces put on, but you kind of get the gist of what's going on. Sandy, she is a very, very pretty model. She is um, a sassy, you know, she's a diva sometimes, but she, she uh, gave some great inspiration today. I actually told Tessa, I didn't think I was going to have photos uh, because yesterday as we were, you know, talking about, oh my gosh, we gotta get this done. Maybe we shouldn't have spent so much time enjoying the outdoors. And I was like, I'm just not going to have photos. There was just no way I was going to have photos. But then I did get to, uh, Kitty was, um, cooperative. I'm sure I looked like a fool out in the backyard, like kind of like trying to get her attention and crouching down to get the photos. You know, if you have pets on there is, you know, definitely get down low, get some new perspectives with them. If you can, um, you know, these days, sometimes getting down low doesn't it always feel good. My knees are not always the happy campers. So I see Diane is asking about which trimmer do I use to trim the photos? And I use the personal trimmer. Um, we're not going to talk to Tessa and ask her opinion because she's wrong. Um, she's over there smirking. She knows she knew that was coming. I liked I like the guillotine style trimmer. Um, that's personal choice on that one. Um, Creative Memories does have a is planning to have a new photo trimmer. It'll be guillotine style. It's coming out later uh, late summer in time for Croptoberfest. We should know more details. We saw previews of it for those of us who were able to go to Puerto Vallarta with the advisor incentive trip. It was pr I really Really liked it. Tessa said she'd give it her best shot, but she likes using the old 12 inch trimmer. If you're using the rotary trimmer, that one's not so much designed for photos. That's why the new personal trimmer is actually going to be called the photo trimmer. So if you like the guillotine style, or you're just maybe not happy with what your current style of cutting the photos are, and you've never tried the guillotine, you can wait just a little bit and we'll have that new trimmer coming out soon. So that's what we've got for you guys for Power Hour. Just as a reminder, if you do share your layouts, and we'd love for you to do so, is there is the, there it is, the hashtag on here. If you share into the ideas and inspirations group, that group is always linked in our emails. It has a green header at the top, uh, but share, use that hashtag and you'll be entered into a drawing. We always send out some happy mail. Uh, you'll have till the end of the month to be able to post your layouts. So we'd love for you to see what you do. You don't have to have photos. Um, you don't even have to use creative memory supplies. Use what you've got. We love seeing everything. Love the color combos and just all sorts of inspirational ideas of ways to use paper paper that we have thought, the different tools, especially with Tessa, she's going to be, have her layout has those different um, border punches and every combo that people are going to have. So you have till the end of the month to go ahead and share those in the ideas and inspiration group. The other thing, and we talked about it at the top of the hour before we started recording, was summer scrap is almost here. So our summer scrap challenge. Many of you joined us for the winter frolic scrap challenge. It's summer is very, very similar. I fact, it's pretty much the same thing, just new ideas. Um, we do have videos that we are doing, and we started that, our, you know, kind of um, played with that as an option in winter frolic, but we will have those for summer scrap as well. So there'll be um, new challenge layouts every Monday. This is an eight week basher stash type of event. You don't have to use creative memories. You don't have to use new products. It's all about getting your projects done, keeping your motivation going in the summer when it's really distracting sometimes to be outside. Now, to be fair, I will now be in a place in the middle of summer scrap where it's like 110 degrees. So scrapbooking may actually, I may have more time for scrapbooking living in Arizona. Winter frolic will be the one where I'll have a hard time wanting to stay indoors. But uh, for the summer, summer scrap challenge registration is open. It's on our website. You will also see a link to it in the email that we send out that'll have this recording plus the handouts. I don't think we have any corrections to do, uh, but you will get a link, an email with the recording. 
It is also on our YouTube channel or will be uploaded later today. So make sure you've liked and subscribed to our YouTube channel so that you can get those, um, those things coming up. The other thing that we want to make sure you guys know is that Tessa is starting to do more lives. I'm super excited. She does them on Fridays, her Simply Scrappy. So make sure you guys are following her to get all those fun things. I do the scrapbook live on Wednesday. So we're doing our best to keep you guys working and all sorts of ideas coming your way. But make sure you like and subscribe to both of our YouTube channels. You have, you're uploading to YouTube, aren't you? Yes, she's nodding her head. And um, I see Deb is asking if the, the um, Summer Scrap Challenge things are recorded. Yes, they are recorded. It is the other thing I would like to kind of highlight on summer scrap or when we do our scrap challenges is they're asynchronous, meaning that you do them when it works best for you. So if you're going on a two week cruise, or maybe you have friends coming into town or other vacation plans, they're going to have you not able to do things for a couple of weeks. That's okay. When you come back and you have time to start scrapbooking again, you're going to have some great things out there for you to go and get you inspired, get you moving on those projects. So you do things as it works for your schedule. You actually have clear until August 15th. So it's actually closer to 10 weeks of time to complete all the challenges if you want to be entered into our prize drawings. All right. So that's all I have, um, I think, for you today. Jane is saying this is our first Zoom with both of us. So excited that you could join us. We appreciate all of you new people who join us. That every The ones who come every month that you've been doing this now for, oh my gosh, is it going to be four years? Is it really four years in October? So yeah, guys, it's been three and a half years. It'll be four years in October that we've been doing this. Um, so lots and lots of fun. All right. Um, Carolyn's asking about the kickoff crop. So for winter frolic and for uh, summer scrap, we always have a kickoff crop. We do not necessarily have that one figured out yet. Tessa and I need to sit down and look at our calendars. She's got like some soccer tournaments and other things that are making things a little bit more difficult to schedule for a weekend. So it'd probably be a weekday, um, but we will definitely get that uh, information posted. So you guys will be able to put that on your calendars if you're joining us for summer scrap. All right, ladies. Thanks we, so much. What? And if they, oh. they did register, we have not let anyone into the group yet. So it'll so, be at yes. least a week or so. Yes. So if you have registered, you will, after you register, you will go to a confirmation page that has a link that tells you, uh, you click, takes you to the Facebook group and you just request to join. And that's all you need to do. We will open that group up probably as Tessa mentioned in another week to 10 days. We don't usually open it too early, um, but we will make sure uh, we open it up early enough to get everybody in there and track down the people that maybe didn't quite get everything clicked correctly. Your Facebook sometimes is not always um, cooperative. So we want to make sure you're all in the right space. Um, so hopefully you guys will check it out on our website, meganandtessa.com. All right. I think that's all I've got. All right. Is that everything? Anything else, Tessa? Did I forget anything? Max really wants to be fed, so I need to let her go so she can take care of the cats. All right, everybody, we'll see you all next month. Uh, it's early. I think we're doing June 4th, right? It's like the first Tuesday of the month. I think it's June 4th because after that, I'm going to be like packed up and ready to go. So mark your calendars June 4th. We'll have all those details coming soon. Thanks so much.